Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to a brand new unit. Uh, we have chapter two and a half and I can explain to you why it's two and a half if you want, but it's titled Senses and Perception. Uh, let's get right into lesson one, which is sensation. So here we go. There's two parts to it, obviously. This is the first part. We start off with a story. Uh, about Helen Keller. I'm not sure if you have ever heard of her, but Helen Keller is a famous person who had been blind and deaf since she was two years old. Uh, essentially two of the major communication senses. Um, when she was six, uh, there is Ann Sullivan, who was a teacher, used the sense of touch by spelling words into Helen's hand and then touching the object. And um, you may have seen a clip of this, uh, but there was a breakthrough it came one day when Anne spelled the word water, and then there was uh, a spell that poured water over her hand. Uh, and that was a breakthrough, that she understood that that was water, that that tracing on her hand represented the thing that she had just touched. So I stood still, my whole attention fixed upon the motions of her fingers. Helen remembered and eventually became able to communicate uh, quite well, so uh, famous person here. She entered a world of sensations after she began organizing the stimuli in her world. Uh, it's very important how we organize all of the different stimuli that come in. Um, the light that goes into your eyes and the sound vibrations that go into your ears, the things that you touch, smell, taste, the position of your body. How do you organize all of those stimuli to make out where you are and what you're doing and figure out what you need to do to complete your task. Uh, so I'll get you to read this next uh, paragraph. Um, I will read part of it and then I will kind of stop and allow you to give it a go. So try it yourself. In the next few seconds, something peculiar will start happening to the material And you may have figured some of it out. You may have figured all of it out. You may be figuring it out here as we go, but it says to the material you are reading, it is often uh, not realized how complex the process of reading is. Um, so essentially all the letters are there and all the words are there, but it is not organized how we expect it to be. Your success in gathering information depends on it being organized in ways you expect. Um, essentially, if it's not how you expect it to be, you won't be able to understand it. So you have, re you have learned that words come in chunks with spaces between them, so when it doesn't actually happen, we have a lot harder time understanding what the word actually says. Sensation and perception are necessary to gather and interpret information in our surroundings. So we're able to gather the information with our senses, and interpret the information uh, with perception, essentially. So what is a sensation? A sensation is any aspect uh, of change in the environment to which an organism responds, and that's called uh, a stimulus. Uh, an alarm, uh, an electric light, a muscle ache, they're all stimuli for people. And a sensation occurs anytime a, a stimulus activates one of your receptors. So. Uh, if you touch your hand, you're activating your receptors, that is a sensation. Um, if it's sitting by the fire and a spark lands on you and it burns you, that is a heat uh, stimulus and you feel a sensation, uh, maybe pain. Uh, the sense organs detect um, physical changes in energy such as heat, light, sound, physical pressure, um, and that is what you are feeling. So a sensation is a change in heat, a change in light for your eyes, a change in sound for your ears, a change in physical pressure, a uh, change in taste. I think it's key that we talk about changes in these things. And what is a perception? So a, sen a sensation 
may be combined with other sensations and your past experiences to yield a perception. So a perception is the organization of sensory information into meaningful experiences. Essentially, you take all of these things that are bombarding you and you organize it and you perceive the environment around you. Uh, then you can change it into a meaningful experience. Um, you don't see just these streaks of light. You don't just like hear these weird sounds. You would see a dog and hear the dog barking. You would put that and you would organize it into something meaningful. That is a perception. So psychologists are interested in the relationship between the stimuli and your sensory experiences. So uh, an example would be in vision. Uh, the perception of color corresponds to the wavelength of light, uh, whereas the brightness corresponds to the intensity of this stimulus. So that might be different for different people, the intensity. Some people might say that's bright, and other people say that is not. That is you uh, taking the sensation and perceiving it into something meaningful. Um, the color directly corresponds to a wavelength of light. We know that sound um, directly corresponds to uh, the, the wavelength or the vibration um, of the sound traveling through the air. So uh, some senses correspond directly to um, something physical, like that's the stimulus, whereas the perception of it can change. How you uh, organize it and what it means to you can change from person to person. Just like this here, when you have two people standing on opposite sides, uh, although the stimulus is the same, there is this shape on the ground. Uh, based on where they are, they perceive it differently. One says it's a six, and the other says it's a nine. Uh, again here, we have almost the same characters. This guy's got a fro this time. Uh, but he's pointing, he says this is one, two, three, four blocks. And at first I was like, yeah, that's obviously four blocks. And I went over to this guy and he said, no, it's three. And then I counted on this side, one, two, three, and I'm, holy smokes, he's right too. Uh, so it, even though the um, sensation uh, will be the same for both, the stimulus is the same for both the perception of it or how it, they organize it to make it meaningful to them is different. And that's true for uh, all different people. So we have key point three here, threshold. So psychologists have tried to determine how much of a stimulus is necessary for a person to sense it at all. Like if you're in a perfectly black room, how much of a light is necessary for you to be able to see it? Uh, how much energy is required for someone to hear a sound or to see a light? How much of a scent has to be in a room before one can smell it? That is a threshold. Um, so an absolute threshold is the weakest amount of a stimulus required to produce a sensation. Essentially, they've done tests on this. Psychologists have tested this uh, to see what the absolute threshold is, the weakest stimulus that they can use to produce a sensation. Uh, and it turns out, uh, so, so the level uh, that they use is that it produces a positive response 50% of the time. Essentially, half the time that stimulus is presented, uh, someone will say, yes, I saw it. The other half of the time, they will not be able to detect it. That is the absolute threshold. So I thought this was really interesting and I wondered about how they tested these things exactly, but there are absolute thresholds that scientists have determined uh, for humans. And they are uh, for vision, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. So for vision, if you can see it, 50% uh, of people will see a candle flame from 30 miles away on a clear night and 50% won't. Um, for hearing, 50% of people will hear a watch ticking 20 feet away while half won't. Half uh, of a group will taste one teaspoon of sugar dissolved in two gallons of water while half won't. And I'm just picturing them getting people to drink all these gallons of water and say, does it have sugar in it or not? Uh, and smell, one drop of perfume in a three room house. I wondered how big the house was, like what were the three rooms? Are they small rooms, are they big rooms? Like what drop of what perfume? Uh, and then for touch, I thought this one was crazy. They obviously tore off a bee's wing, which made me feel sad, but a uh, feeling a bee's wing falling a distance of one centimeter onto your cheek. 50% of people will feel that 
and 50% of people will not. So I just thought these were really interesting thresholds and I wondered how they arrived at these values. Must have been a lot of testing. Here we have a chart and uh, I think five of them are very common to us. We have sight, hearing, uh, touch, smell and taste, five senses. Um, with the sense organs that we know and love, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and your skin for touch. Um, but there are a couple here that I wanna draw your attention to, which would be vestibular senses, which is balance, and kinesthesis, which is where your body is, like where your arms are, where your legs are, and like where they need to be to keep your posture, um, and to keep, to keep you walking straight. Uh, so there are a couple of senses here that aren't the regular five uh, and that we are going to talk about um, in future lessons here. So just take note of those. Sensory differences. So key point four here. Um, something that's really important is the difference threshold. It refers to the minimum amount of difference a person can detect between two stimuli. So if we go to a, a person in a dark room, a psychologist would test for the difference threshold by gradually increasing the intensity of visible light until the person says, yes, this is brighter than the light I just saw. Kind of when you go to the eye doctor and they go, is this one better or, or is this one better? Yes or no. Um, they are seeing if you ha can tell the difference. Now, um, with visible light, they would be seeing just what you can detect in a difference and this is generally more useful as there's often like there's there's barely ever no sensory um, information coming into you so it's more you know, useful for humans to be able to tell a difference in senses so a particular sensory experience depends more on the changes in the stimulus than on the absolute size or the amount so for example uh, if you put a three pound package of food in an empty backpack obviously you will perceive a great difference. There will be, it will be a lot heavier from zero to three pounds. But if you add three pounds to a backpack that already has 100 pounds in it, um, you will not be able to perceive the difference in weight. There will hardly be an increase at all. Your perception will not be able to pick it up. The way you organize information, it will not matter if it's 100 or 103 pounds. But zero to three, does make a difference. So it's really the difference in stimuli that make um, that, that's really important. We can gradually dim lights and people will not uh, notice as much, but if you flick on the lights all of a sudden, people really care. The difference between the lights off and the lights on is often very large. So uh, we have Weber's law, which is the larger or stronger a stimulus, the larger the change that will be required for a person to notice anything has happened to it. Um, so essentially, if it's very bright outside, it will have to get a lot brighter or a lot darker for you to notice. Uh, if it's not very bright, you will be able to detect the change in stimulus a lot easier. Uh, some senses produce huge increases in sensation uh, in response to small increases in energy. For instance, uh, the pain of an electric shock if you increase it just a little bit, it can hurt you a, a lot more. So the pain can be increased, <coughs> pardon me, eight times by doubling the voltage. Eight times by doubling the voltage. On the other hand, the intensity of light must be increased many times to double its brightness. So it depends on what sense you're actually dealing with. Uh, pain, if you increase it a little bit, you get a lot more pain. But if you, uh, for light, you have to increase it, the intensity a lot to double its brightness. And that just probably depends on how uh, your body interprets those stimuluses. So we have your job. There's important terms for you. And then there's an assignment. I titled Animal Senses for this one. Um, but check it out. And if you have questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you soon.